Mopar suspension. I'm talking about a unibody construction with leaf springs in the back and torsion bars up front. Whether you're road racing, street driving, or going down the quarter mile, suspension improvements have come a long way for Mopars now. We have options such as tubular control arms versus stock or reinforced control arms, complete tubular K-frames, we have larger sway bars and larger torsion bars, we have full coilover suspensions that you can do as well as adjustable shocks. So let's take a look at our options and see what's best for our car. First, let's take a look at the history of the Mopar suspension system. They first used torsion bars in 1957 in the Fury, which was actually the Motor Trend car of the year. And in 1960 was when they moved to a unibody construction. There's a front substructure assembly and rear substructure assembly and it's all tied together with the floor pans and the rocker panels. Now this differs from General Motors where they were using a full frame at the time. First let's have a look at some of our options that we have with our stock style suspension systems. One of the first names that comes to my mind when I think of performance suspension products is Hotchkiss. Now I'll never forget the first time I saw the Emax Challenger and what an impression that made on me. I just thought it was one of the coolest builds and just the way they made that car um, handle like, like a modern car and perform so well, I just had never seen anything like it before. It had left a lasting impression on me and I thought one day, you know, that's something I definitely would like to try to mimic and uh, use as an inspiration. Hotchkiss has developed a TVS system, which is, stands for Total Vehicle System, and so it's a really well thought out, complete package, so you don't have to worry about trying to mix and match components from different manufacturers. It has your rear leaf springs, your subframe connectors, your front and rear sway bars, your uh, adjustable front strut rods, which you, you might not think is necessary, but wow, your factory ones are, are fixed. They have these large ru rubber bushings that attach to your K-frame, and they need to locate your lower control arm and keep it in, in a fixed position while uh, so it doesn't move fore and aft. But th these will help eliminate any movement and uh, great addition, as well as their upper control arms. I think they're really well thought out and engineered. Uh, they're pretty expensive though, they're about $1,000 if you were to buy them separately, but they're part of the kit. And one, one thing that they do is they correct the bump steer, which is when you're going through a corner and if you hit any bumps or if you have any um, vertical travel in your wheels, it's going to change your geometry and uh, it really will help unsettle the car. Well, will these correct that with their way they're designed and engineered? So it's a really clever system and I really like what they offer. So. Hotchkiss also offers adjustable and non-adjustable shocks and now those are made by Fox and if you know anything about sh shock systems you've heard that name Fox so it's a quality product that they make um, built and designed by Fox for their specifications. Next let's look at the QA1 suspension. They've been around for quite a while too and they have a really strong product listing for uh, many vehicles not just Mopars but what they do offer for Mopars is they have a complete um, package system as well. In that system they have you know uh, upper and lower control arms and not too many people offer lower control arms for uh, the Mopar at least their stock style sus suspension. Uh, they do offer one so I'm sure it's gonna be a little stiffer it might even be a little bit lighter but uh, I think in general a stock lower control arm is adequate especially if you um, use some of the stiffening braces that are out there for it but they do offer them and maybe if you're missing them it might be a good investment for you and your vehicle. Uh, I know their QA1 shocks are adjustable and I know people that run them and they really do like them. I know it's a quality product and they have their, of course the front and rear sway bars. They have the adjustable strut rods and one piece that I really like is their tubular K-frame. So you can see it here it's what 744 and this is pretty neat because it works with a stock style suspension. It works with your torsion bars and um, it's still what it's going to offer is a little bit of weight savings and it's going to be stiffer and but it's going to give you a lot more clearance you know it's not the easiest install right i mean you pretty much got to have everything out of your engine bay to do it but it's a pretty slick piece so i do like it and something i would recommend if you are going deep into a build where you might want to replace your k-frame right but it would definitely be one of the things further down my list because 
that I want to upgrade. You know, I would definitely look at all your other pieces first, such as your you know, sw your sway bars, your upper control arms, uh, torsion bars. Uh, K frame would is a neat piece, but it's definitely I wouldn't say one of the must haves. And then they also offer the full coilover systems, and they're I think they're really well engineered and they they look really nice. They just they're expensive, right? And I think for 95% of people out there, or maybe even higher percent, I, I think it's not going to be necessary. Um, you know, gosh, the factory systems work really well. They're proven to work well. But whether you just want like the most extreme build, or if you're going to be tracking the car and you just want to get rid of uh, the leaf springs and torsion bars, it's you know it's an option now, right? And I think they have a pretty well thought out cast. Just again, it's expensive. And uh, you're gonna have to mod modify the car a lot. You know, it's really going far away from stock. I wouldn't do it on any car of, uh, of value. You know, if it was a, a rare car, I wouldn't do anything like that on one of those vehicles. But just knowing that it's out there, it's a good option to have. Next, I want to talk about Firm Feel and some of the products they offer. They offer a lot of products for your stock style suspensions and they offer your steering boxes both power and manual and then they offer your you know your pitman arms your idler arms um, a lot of your suspension components they also offer your sway bars uh, or sway bar kits i should say they offer tubular upper control arms and they also offer uh, your bilstein shocks which is a real nice shock if you don't want to spend the money on something like a qa1 or the hotchkiss shock um, it won't be adjustable but it's a real quality product and they offer leaf springs as well and one thing I really do like is they offer a wide selection of torsion bars so here you can see they have your uh, smallest diameter which is uh, 0.845 which is going to be a real small diameter torsion bar a really light spring something you might want you would want to use in like a drag race application so the larger diameter the higher the spring rate is the way that works so um, they offer all the way up to 1.18 uh, for comparison, the Hotchkiss um, torsion bar is actually a 1.1 diameter. So, um, yeah, good selection there. So, you can always uh, try to find some resources, see what people have used, uh, try to figure out what uh, might be best for your application. For I know, though, a lot of guys like to run larger torsion bars and what the came stock, just to help give it um, less suspension or, or, I'm sorry, less body roll, right? So it really is going to help the car handle better. Another option that you, we have for the upper control arms is by a specialty products company, or SPC commonly known. They have a pretty uh, slick looking upper control arm uh, which uh, has a lot of adjustability and it's supposed to give us a lot more caster and camber um, adjustment so might be something you want to look into as well. It's pretty pricey too, it's just over a thousand dollars so it's in the same price range as the Hotchkiss but uh, it looks like a decent piece so um, that's something you might want to look into as well. Another coilover system that's pretty popular if you uh, do some research is the RMS kit which is uh, altercation and they have a front end uh, coilover system as well as a rear and uh, again you can see the price you know it's pretty expensive it's basically five thousand dollars for the front end system but you know for, for me if, unless I was building an all-out track car on something that again they didn't have a lot of um, value per se as if it was like a base model car and it wasn't in good shape if I wasn't afraid to cut it up well, then you might want to consider it, you know, but other than that, I, I'm a big fan of the factory style suspension, but, you know, it's going to offer you a lot more uh, header clearance, you know, we're going with uh, a system like this, right? So, and uh, I've always, I've always been intrigued. I've never driven an old Mopar with a rack and pinion steering, but I like the concept. So, if that's something you're interested in, if you want, had a big budget, you know, you want to do um, a build with the coilovers, I would look at the RMS or QA1 like I mentioned before. And uh, they have a, the rear system, you can see, they call it the Street Lynx, and it's, uh, it's $2,000. So, pretty solid setup, but again, you're going to have to do a lot of fabrication, a lot of cutting to put this into your car. So, definitely not for the faint of heart, and in my opinion, once go, you go this route, you're not coming back at all. So, something to look into. 
Now I want to go a little different direction with the conversation and look at stiffening and reinforcing the unibody car. I think US Car Tool makes a great kits and um, pieces you can buy. You can buy it as a full package or you can buy them individually. But uh, the big one that they make is the uh, subframe connectors and, and they're really unique. So they are actually uh, cut out with a laser to shape in the profile of the floor pans of the car. So they fit snug and really tight up against your vehicle. Now, this one's, these are a little bit more labor intensive to put in. You can't just like bolt to the, the back uh, frame rail assembly and uh, or to the front. You're gonna have to remove your carpeting and your seats because you're gonna be welding these to the floor pan. But, I mean, it's pretty, I know a lot of people have done these when they're in the middle of a restoration or like a rotisserie paint job where you disassemble the car and that's the perfect time to do their kit but it's a great kit they also have like the torque boxes they have the inner fender stiffening braces you can see all their pieces here highlighted in yellow by the way and uh, they offer just a lot of good ways to stiffen up the car so I think it's a great alternative again um, if you're gonna really want to stiffen up the car um, you're really going to take your performance and handling into, into account and this would be a good time to do that like when you're doing a um, rotisserie paint job. You know for the longest time but now let's talk about drag racing. For the longest time one of the most popular options that we had for leaf spring cars was the Mopar Performance, you know the super stock leaf springs. But since then we have a company, uh, Caltrack, has come around and they've done a lot of research and technology. And I like what they offer. So they offer what they call Caltrack. So it's a type of, I wouldn't call it a traction bar, but it's, it's similar, right? A traction bar is going to limit your axle wrap. And when these are kind of similar as far as what they do, but it's going to be adjustable. They attached to the uh, bottom of your leaf spring perches under your axle. And then they mount up, uh, they have a hard mount point at the front of your leaf spring perch. So you have an adjustable rod in there as well. So this is gonna limit and really reduce how much axle wrap up you can. Because every time your axle wraps up, which it will, it's gonna have a lot of rotation under hard acceleration. And you're gonna, you know, your pinion angle is gonna change when this happens. And that's also why there's been an adjustable pinion snubber. You know, the pinion snubber back in the day, that was there and designed to, you could set it like, you know, a half inch, three quarters of an inch away from your floor pan. And it actually, you know, hit the bottom of your floor pan when under hard acceleration, because that's how much the axle is going to rotate. And that is, you know, one negative with leaf spring cars, in my opinion. But these are designed, and if you're really serious about drag racing, going straight line, I think the Caltrack bars, and they also offer a split, you know, monoleaf leaf spring, which is pretty slick. I really like the idea there. You're going to save some weight, and there's a lot of technology into their leaf spring bars. So that's something I would definitely consider if I was going into or building, you know, a drag race application car. So that's going to sum up the suspension uh, discussion I wanted to have today, just give you an idea of what's out there, maybe some uh, food for thought so you can consider some of these options for uh, whatever you're going to be working on on your build. And I thought I'd leave off here with some really cool Mopars road racing and drag racing. So give us a little inspiration, something to look at, have fun and enjoy. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys next time.